I just had a cerebral angiogram done. Basically that's an angiogram done like of all the arteries and veins in your brain. It went pretty well. <laughs> For this one he didn't sedate me at all and so they gave me some pain medication and they numb up the area on, the, on your leg that they go up through and it all went well except for the pain medication gave me some bad side effects. I was super dizzy and sick feeling and like really shaky. According to my doctor, the best results are when you don't have any kind of sedation even with like first ed and so it's a little bit, it can make people nervous to be in the operating room when you're not sedated. It's over now and I just to come in. Oh, oh okay. That's my dad. <laughs> Anyways, the pressures in my head were still too high and there are some areas that have possible opportunities for more stents. I already have two stents in my right transverse sinus and this is for intracranial hypertension, which is when your cerebral spinal fluid pressure is too high. So we'll see. He didn't seem super optimistic about them helping the way that they should, but it may be a good thing to try before having to go with something like a shunt. So he's going to come in a little bit later to discuss with us in further like detail about what he found and what he recommends. So yeah, I'll talk with you guys later more about what the whole process for the angiogram was like, but just wanted to give a quick little update and I'll see you later. So I had my cerebral angiogram done a while ago now, but I just wanted to go over what the day looked like for those of you that might be watching this video because you're preparing for one yourself and wanted to know what to expect. If you're having this angiogram to determine whether or not you need a stent placed for intracranial hypertension or something else then some doctors will place the stent directly after the angiogram if you need one, whereas other doctors will do the angiogram and if you need a stent, place it on a different day. My first stent placement was all on the same day and I was awake for the angiogram and then they put me to sleep afterwards and did the stent. This time around, they <clears throat> did the angiogram and about 10 days later they put in my stents, so it could go either way. Some doctors will actually do this procedure under general anesthesia, but both doctors that have done stents for me believe that putting someone under general anesthesia actually alters the results of the angiogram. It can actually make it look like somebody's pressure differentials are lower than how they are when they're normally awake and conscious, and so that's just something to keep in mind. My first angiogram was done with Versid, and so I don't remember like a lot of it, but I was still kind of awake. But this doctor that I saw now actually even doesn't like to use Versid because he believes that even that can alter the results. So we got there early in the morning, and it was in the hospital in interventional radiology. And the nurse took us back, and she had me change into a gown and started an IV. And you just kind of wait there for a while and the doctor will come in and he'll go over the procedure and you'll sign your life away and then they'll take you back to the operating room in the hospital bed and then they'll transfer you over from that bed over to like the table where they do the procedure and for me there was this huge like TV screen that was where they looked at like the CT scan guidance during the procedure, which I thought was kind of cool. They basically like strapped me down to the table. They like put tape over my forehead down in, into the table and like taped my arms down and everything like that so you can't move at all. If you're not used to having medical procedures or being like in that setting, then I can imagine that would be nerve wracking for a lot of people. Thankfully for me, I've, I don't know if thankfully, but I have had a lot of medical procedures and surgeries and so I wasn't too nervous about that part of it. Then they gave me pain medication and they cleaned the area 
on my leg really well with like iodine to prep for the sterile procedure. Then they get out the sterile kit and tape it around the area that they're gonna go in at the top of your leg and my doctor just walked me through every step of the process and they injected me with a local an anesthetic on the in the area that they went into and that was just a quick stick and a burn and I was really surprised by how I, I didn't feel that much. I was expecting for it to hurt quite a bit and it really wasn't too bad. And then he just continued to tell me where what he was doing. He'd say like, you know, I'm going up up through your heart, through your neck, up into your head and it's kind of weird like when you're awake and they're going up with wires into your brain, but then they inject contrast and he'll say you might feel the side of your face really warm and you might see like light flashes from the contrast but it doesn't last that long and i felt the most weird to me when they like got up into my head and it hurt some but not like too much i, I was kind of expecting it to hurt more but really for me the worst part was the side effects of the pain medicine that they gave me they gave me fentanyl and I guess they gave me a little bit too much for my size. Afterwards, they were like, oh yeah, you're a lot smaller than this for our patients. I guess we kind of did give you a lot and <laughs> I was just feeling was super dizzy and shaky. And If I did it again, I would do it without pain medication just because I think I would have been totally fine without it. Okay, after they like took the wires out, then they applied pressure on the artery that they accessed for a few minutes and they closed it off with this special balloon device that I guess stays in your leg and for a couple of weeks and then it dissolves. And after that I had to lay completely flat for a couple of hours and they transferred me over to this day hospital area and they just monitor your vitals and come check on the puncture site to make sure everything looks good. And then once you get up and walk around then they let you go home. The puncture site bruised up a lot for me, like a really big bruise. Um, some people even get bruises that are like halfway down their leg. My leg was super sore. It was like actually kind of hard to walk for a couple of days, which was surprising because that didn't happen for me with my original stent placement or even this most recent stent placement. My leg wasn't as sore as it was from the angiogram, which is weird, but Otherwise, it was okay. It's definitely on the like more intense end of like a medical procedure that you're awake for of all those that I've had. In comparison to like a spinal tap, I would definitely say that it was more involved in a little bit more nerve wracking, but I would, I would take it over a spinal tap any day because of all the CSF leaks and stuff like that that I get from those. So... Yeah, if you are going to have a cerebral angiogram, I wish you all the best and feel free to let me know how it goes. Good luck and keep hanging in there guys. I will look forward to seeing you next week.